Now let's get updates from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russia's defense ministry says Moscow repelled a drone attack on its Black Sea fleet station in the Crimean port of Sevastopol in the early hours of today. Sevastopol, which is on the Crimean peninsula that Russia annexed in 2014, has come under repeated air attacks since Russia invaded Ukraine last February. However, Russian officials have blamed the attacks on Ukraine. The ministry said Russia destroyed all three of the naval drones, suffering no casualties or losses in the process. Authorities say passenger ferry transport was temporarily suspended in the Black Sea's port city. However, no reason was given, but the agency said traffic had been suspended in the past due to drone attacks or storms. And Pavlo Krilenko, the head of the Donetsk Regional Military Administration, says two people have been killed and two others wounded in the eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut. Ukraine's 93rd Mechanized Brigade released video from Bakhmut showing Ukrainian forces operating inside the city after Russia said it took three more districts there. Russia's defense ministry, on the other hand, said that Russian assault troops had captured three more districts in the western part of Bakhmut. Ukrainian and Russian units have been battling for months over the eastern city, much of which lies in ruins. Meanwhile, local officials say at least five Russian missiles hit the eastern Ukrainian city of Kharkiv and surrounding districts, causing some damage to civilian buildings. Regional Governor Ole Shnaikhubov said one missile hit a house in the village of Kotliari, just to the south of Kharkiv, but another sparked a major fire in the city itself. Two houses were badly damaged in the strike in Kotliari, one being devastated by the explosion which hit the other nearby home. <laughs> Spanish Minister of Defense Margarita Robel says that a six Leopard 2 tax bound for Ukraine have left the Spanish port city of Santander in northern Spain and are en route to their destination. She told journalists that tanks left the uh, this area, along with 20 heavy transport vehicles and the trip by sea, would take from five to six days. She said last week, four more Leopard tanks, in addition to the current six, will be sent to Ukraine following repairs as, as soon as possible. Ukraine has been reliant on outdated Soviet-era tanks throughout the Russian invasion and has appealed to the West for modern battle tanks to bolster Kyiv's forces. An EU foreign policy chief, uh, Yosef Borrell, has expressed confidence that the bloc would finalize a plan within days to buy ammunition for Ukraine after Kyiv expressed frustration at the wrangling among EU member states. Artillery rounds, particularly 155mm shells, have become critical to the conflict as Ukrainian and Russian forces wage an intense war of attrition. Officials say Kyiv is burning through more rounds than its allies can currently produce. Yes, still there is some disagreement, but I'm sure everybody will understand that we are in a situation of uh, extreme urgency. I'm sure that in the following days we will reach... Uh, but while we look for this legal agreement, don't believe that we are just sitting and waiting. The whole work is, is going on. The whole work is going on. So once the legal uh, agreement will be reached, the work, the practical work, will be finished. We already had this debate before uh, last FAC, and it was divided that uh, having fast deliveries is more important at this point. I, I understand those who want to see uh, European military industry flourishing. Indeed, we need that. But if we delay, currently, Ukrainians might not push as far and as successfully as they could with our assistance. Therefore, speed is the main factor that we should be looking for now. I think it's, uh, we have to speed up the joint procurement of uh, ammunition and, and do it with the, uh, those uh, needs that Ukraine has. I, I think the, we should now overcome all the bureaucratic uh, uh, things in Brussels on, on this issue. And of course we are waiting very much the 
possible spring offensive in, in Ukraine and, and Ukraine needs uh, all our support in these circumstances. Meanwhile, foreign ministers for the Czech Republic and Lithuania have said recent remarks by China's ambassador to France questioning the sovereignty of former Soviet states such as Ukraine are totally unacceptable. In a televised interview, the Chinese ambassador Liu Xie was asked about his position on whether Crimea is part of Ukraine and he said historically the peninsula was part of Russia and had been offered to Ukraine by a former Soviet leader. These ex-USSR countries don't have actual status in international law because there's no international agreement to materialize their sovereign status. France, Ukraine and the three Baltic states all expressed dismay at Lou's comments over the weekend. It is totally and totally unacceptable. We are denouncing uh, such a statement and I hope that the uh, uh, bosses of this ambassador will make things straight. Well, first of all, it's completely unacceptable. Uh, and uh, later today, uh, three Baltic states uh, will be summoning uh, representatives, in our case, the Charge Affairs and other capitals is the ambassador, to ask for clarification. Has Chinese uh, position changed uh, on, the, on the independence? And to remind him that uh, we are not post-Soviet countries, we are the countries that were illegally occupied by Soviet Union. But China is an interlocutor. Well, we need to respect our position. We need to respect the European Union. We need to respect every member state. We respect China. I think it's important to respect us. This is crucial. The VOA's Anna Chenikova joins me now from Kiev. Anna, good to see you today. 27 EU ambassadors to the UN have condemned Russia's actions in Ukraine. Isn't this the point where both parties come to the negotiating table? Good evening. Uh, well, as we already have seen before, uh, there were uh, a lot of uh, decisions taken by the international bodies uh, and very serious decisions uh, and very serious announcements heard. But uh, the problem here is that uh, there are two main sides for, for future negotiations and possible negotiations, which is Ukraine and Russia. And uh, for Ukraine, there are certain... Uh, uh, let's say there are certain points which uh, Ukraine needs to um, to ensure before it enters nego negotiations. And for Russia, uh, Russia will also have to um, demonstrate its readiness for real real negotiations because for the moment, all and all um, statements that we hear from the official Russian uh, representatives uh, basically uh, are telling that uh, negotiations are only possible on Russia's um, uh, on on Russia's priorities and on Russia's rules. So basically, before negotiation starts, it should be at least. Uh, uh, an agreement of, uh, you know, uh, on the body of negotiations and on the points of negotiations, because for the moment, both sides uh, have their own positions, which do not correlate at, at all at this moment. And uh, uh, for the moment, we still see that the main negotiation is happening on the battlefield. And of course, for Ukraine, uh, more successful it will be at the battlefield, especially, uh, again, uh, talking um, or well, mentioning uh, this upcoming uh, counteroffensive, which Ukraine is getting ready, ready to, uh, it might be a very serious point uh, of if this if this counteroffensive is successful, then for Ukraine it might be uh, some additional serious points to start these nego negotiations. But again, uh, it should be also readiness from Russian side. And for the moment, um, we do not see it, uh, at least uh, on the official level uh, and according to the official Russian statements. Right, so EU foreign ministers have been meeting in Luxembourg to discuss ammunition for Ukraine. Uh, give us updates on that discussion. Uh, Ukrainian uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dmitry Kuleba, um, he uh, said that 
the most important at this point is fast delivery. And this is also what we've heard from uh, different representatives of the meeting and uh, from different ministers, uh, because uh, basically, according to to what Kuleba said, and this is official Ukrainian position, faster Ukraine gets ammunition, more ammunition and, and equipment Ukraine gets, more success uh, could be reached in this counter-offensive. Also, Mr. Kuleba mentioned that uh, the, um, the the victory of Ukraine and uh, the, lo- the lose of Russia in this war uh, would mean um, would mean normal guarantees for normal life in Europe, and this is why uh, he also highlighted once again that Ukraine needs more ammunition, more equipment as fast as possible, and faster it happens. Uh, more chances uh, there are for Ukraine to actually get to this, you know, uh, right, co- correct timing for counteroffensive to begin and uh, more chances for its successful uh, implementation. So uh, this pro- this is probably the most important uh, negotiation point at this meeting and uh, at least um, uh, and, and also, Mr. Kuleba mentioned that uh, Ukraine and Europe uh, and European countries, EU countries, uh, they have similar strategic ob- object, uh, objections here and strategic goals here um, in this uh, question. So uh, all countries uh, and all bodies, uh, all allies are interested in Ukrainians' victory because this is about safety of the whole European region. And this is the main uh, the main point, uh, Ukrainian point um, stated by uh, the minister of, uh, by the Ukrainian minister of foreign affairs. So while this offer of support, you know, is ongoing for Ukraine, there has been another back and forth uh, between Russia and Ukraine on the tussle for Bakhmut. Uh, do you envisage this bloody battle to the war-torn city ending? Bakhmut battle would be in force for as long as it would be needed for Ukrainian forces to save time, save life, save uh, what is also important, save uh, frontline uh, size. Because uh, today, uh, the head of the Ukrainian um, of the Ukrainian armed forces in this area and of the land forces of Ukraine, Mr. Sirsky, he mentioned that uh, Ukrainian forces would remain. Uh, they are remain at the defense positions, but. As well, uh, he also announced that Ukrainian forces conduct uh, certain uh, counteroffensive actions in this area, particularly Bakhmut, because um, in order to keep the defense lines, in order to keep the front line, and not and making sure that front line do not uh, going uh, do not get getting bigger and wider and deeper into the Ukrainian territory, uh, and uh, this is probably the main. The, the main reason uh, why uh, Bakhmut is that uh, well important for, for so long because we can see that uh, it's uh, it's months uh, a, a lot of months now um, not not even a couple of months that Bakhmut is very very active area at the front line and uh, Russian forces are definitely very active there as well and uh, they continue to uh, attack they continue to advance uh, however. Uh, uh, they cannot uh, capture the whole territory, and in some areas they have to also uh, get back to their defense position. So, uh, for the moment, it doesn't look that. And again, there are a lot of talks that Ukrainian forces might withdraw from from this area uh, if uh, it would be a decision by the heads of the of the government, by the heads of the military, uh, due to uh, and the reason would be to save life of Ukrainian soldiers. But for the moment, what we hear from Mr. Sirsky is that Ukraine uh, keep uh, continues its defense and even counteroffensive actions in that area. Viewers, Anna Chernikova reporting for us live from Kiev. Anna, thank you for that update today. Thank you.